Hey kids, this is Ivan. How you doing? Well, as I left work today, I uh, noticed that same old G had uploaded a new video. So I started it before I uh, put the car in drive. Or, well, first gear. I have a standard. And was driving home and I found myself Roberta Flacked as I was listening to it. And if you've ever been Roberta Flacked, you know it. Uh, and if you're uh, chronologically challenged, go find somebody that's a little older and ask him what the heck I just said. Uh, but you know, he was talking about in this video, I think it's called the darker side of the hobby. And he also mentions in the video several times, it's more of the sad side of the hobby. The idea is that, you know, while the games, you know, role playing in general is meant as a social activity and the games are meant to be played, we're meant to, you know, be experiencing these games together and engaging together as a community, you know, in actual gameplay. Uh, a lot of times what happens is many of us just, uh, spend a lot of time collecting games, reading games, talking about games, maybe making vlogs or blogs, uh, talking to each other and spend a lot of time looking at them, reading them and, and even like fantasizing, making, you know, about what it would be like to play them, creating characters, coming up with scenarios. If you're a game master coming up with, uh, you know, all kinds of worlds and whatnot. But uh, the ratio of thinking about playing and thinking about the games and talking about them maybe uh, to playing the games is decidedly in the favor of thinking about them, fantasizing about them. And it becomes a very solitary hobby when it's really meant to be uh, a hobby where you uh, build connections with other people. And he said that was very sad. And you know, I could relate in a lot of ways to that. So, uh, you know, and he talked about pretty much the, the 500 pound gorilla in the room that nobody talks about very much. So all I can do with this is kind of share my experience. Um, so it's a little bit more of a glimpse into my, my psyche or personal life or whatever that I'm usually want to give in these videos. But uh, I'll just give you my, you know, brief, I guess, story <laughs> or, you know, my experiences, really not a story. But but as a kid, I was less socially um, uh, adept than other other children my age. And that's, uh, you know, continued throughout my life. But I wasn't, you know, didn't make friends really easily. I was a little awkward. And at the same time, I enjoyed reading quite a bit and books became, you know, quite a solace for me. And my, you know, my father introduced me to things like The Hobbit and the, um, Narnia and uh, Star Trek, the original Star Trek. He said, you will watch this, you know, got me a science fiction book club membership when I was a kid. And so I don't want to say I retreated into reading, but it was a solace. It was, it was a place I could go and I really enjoyed it. Um, and I preferred that a lot of times to the company of other kids. You know, I certainly had friends, but I was not the most social. And I didn't just read about fantasy and science fiction and stories. I read a lot of hard science. I was going to be an entomologist and a paleontologist when I was a kid and really just enjoyed spending a lot of time reading about, you know, all kinds of uh, science and all the, uh, all the stories. I enjoyed that. And I was a kid that played with all his, his toy soldiers and dinosaurs and everything else and, you know, made up great stories and battles and whatnot. So when I was introduced in 1981 at the age of 13 to, to uh, Moldvay D&D, &D, you know, BX D&D, &D, uh, that just happened to be the role-playing game I discovered first. It was love at first sight. I'm like, this is really cool. And, you know, so I played a lot, but probably the ratio of, of looking at the books and thinking about it uh, to play was was definitely decidedly in the, in the uh, uh, slanted towards reading the books and thinking about it. And part of it was because of uh, social awkwardness. Part of it was because, uh, you know, you had to find other people that liked to play those games. Uh, sometimes they were just busy and, uh, you know, then, at, you know, at a relatively early age, I started working a lot and got my first job at 15. And I guess this is a bit of a story, but uh, I, st I started working quite a bit because, you know, how else are you going to buy Rush albums and, you know, pay for bass guitar lessons and guitar lessons and all that kind of stuff and, and buy more books huh, on role playing and, and all those funny dice and all that good stuff. So I paid my own way with a lot of these things, but, but I worked quite a bit. And so there was less time for gaming. Um, and, you know, at a relatively young age, you know, I got married and, you know, had kids and, you know, had some other shifts in my life and, and what I was doing, but you know, I got busy. So I didn't have a lot of time to play. I thought about playing quite a bit, um, but just didn't have a lot of time to play. So I didn't get to do it very much. And later on in life, you know, I, I had some paradigm shifts you know, and re-entering the hobby. So I played with some people. I played some games and found out that I did not like them. And... You know, it's funny because I was thinking about it as Sam G was talking about how it's uh, you'd have to put a lot of effort into getting involved in a group or, you know, starting a group with it with a game that's very popular. Uh, it's almost impossible to do it with a kind of like an indie game. Not impossible, but it takes a lot of work. 
And it's funny, OSR retro clones, they're kind of they're kind of indie now. <laughs> when it comes down to in terms of popularity, it is not like playing Pathfinder or fifth edition D and D or something. And you know, the people are just crawling out of the woodwork, you know, in that community to go play with you. So it's tougher. Uh, so today, it, it's funny because I'm, I'm undergoing another paradigm shift. And I'm really not sure where I'm landing in terms of like, you know, what my RPG preferences are now. And I don't have a heck of a lot of time. My schedule is very odd. So, uh, you know, I work from uh, 4 a.m. to 1 p.m. So my bedtime is legitimately like 7 or 8 at night. So it's tougher to game. You know, my children are grown, so I don't have to worry about that. But a lot of the people that I could game with, well, their kids aren't grown and they're busy. Or they're on the other side of the world <laughs> sometimes. So it's tougher. And, you know, it's, I found, you know, now, like, am I still socially a little awkward? Yeah. Uh, I have developed some uh, very close friendships. I have some very uh, profound connections with people now, whereas I didn't about five years ago. And I, I'd, I had a big uh, change in my life. Put it that, leave it at that. But I've developed some profound relationships, profound connections. And unfortunately, these people that I'm very close with, they're not interested in role playing games at all. So I have to go find other people to go do that with. That's limited time. Uh, looking around for people, you know, what do you, you know, of course there's things on the internet, but what do I do? Put a sign out and hire a crier. Um, and then my, my experience is a lot of times that when you finally find people that enjoy role-playing games, they like different ones than you do, or their just style of gaming is a little different. I'm playing with some people locally now and it's, it's okay. It's fun, but we have decidedly different tastes and they are very, uh, I, I guess you call it player first intention and, uh, you know, kind of a beer and pretzels type game and uh, a little more gamist than I would like and uh, whatnot and take things a little less seriously. It's a little fun, but it's I know it's not where I want to land. So I have to develop uh, my own community, which is going to take work. So, uh, yeah, I spend more time, unfortunately, reading, thinking uh, about games, talking about them, blogging about them. Uh, than I do playing right now. And that is unfortunate. I wish it was otherwise. I'm certainly planning to make more efforts to to uh, shift the ratio. But, you know, I'm a busy adult, a little socially awkward, and uh, I'm not willing to settle for some things anymore. So it's really, uh, really important for me to, to uh, uh, choose who I play with uh, carefully. And also at the same time, you know, I, I have enjoyed reading and looking into other games, other styles of play. Uh, so, whereas I wanted to play test that out and, and experience that with some other people, it, it's important to do it with the right people. And finding the right people can be a little difficult at times. So, yeah, sometimes it can be a sad and lonely hobby. Uh, I wish it were different. I wish more there were more cool people out there that, thought, that realized this was awesome. But, uh, you know, we're in a league club. So, that's my, uh, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So, great video, same old G. I really enjoyed that one. I really... Uh, really struck me. It got me thinking quite a bit. It was it was a little emotional. Um, so yeah, that's about as much of a glimpse as you're getting into my personal life, kids. <laughs> Talk to you later. Bye.